Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. I begin my homily on this great solemnity of the body and blood of Christ with the last line of today's gospel passage. It may seem like an odd line on which to focus a homily, but let me explain why. I have chosen it. The setting of the gospel, of course, is the upper room on the night before Jesus dies. He tells the apostles that he must suffer and die, but then he will be raised again in three days. He gives them some final instructions and some words of encouragement. And then he takes bread, says the blessing, breaks the bread, and gives them the bread, saying, take it, eat it, this is my body. And then he takes a cob filled with wine, says the blessing, gives it to them, and says, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which will be shed for many. Jesus celebrates the sacrificial meal that anticipates the suffering, death, and resurrection he will experience over the next three days. And after the meal, they sing a hymn and they go out to the Mount of Olives. They go out to the garden so that Jesus could fulfill the Paschal mystery he had just celebrated. Our celebration of the Eucharist is a representation of the suffering, death, and resurrection of the Lord. At the Mass, we become present in the upper room, at the foot of the cross, at the empty tomb, with the risen Lord. At the Mass, we receive into our lowly human bodies the body, blood, soul, and divinity of the glorified Christ. And then we are sent from this upper room to go out to our Mount of Olives, out there, to our families, to our work, to our friends, into the community, so that we can complete the Eucharist, which has been started here. We complete the Eucharist by announcing out there and making present out there God's kingdom, God's love. Or, as we heard the people of Moses say today, we go out there to do everything that the Lord has told us. And at the heart of that is love of our neighbor. As I mentioned last week, I propose that going out to the Mount of Olives for us here at St. Mary's includes going to the people of Haiti, including two places that I visited during my recent trip to Haiti. I went there along with two nieces of Father Bernie Reiser, who many of you knew, when he served here as an associate pastor back in the 50s and 60s. His nieces, Anne and Joyce, now direct Rise of Relief, an organization dedicated to serving people in, in Haiti. That organization was started by Father Reiser. One place we visited was in the village of Marfrock in Jeremy, which is a one-hour plane ride from Port-au-Prince. After landing at the Jeremy Airport in our little six-seater, which is, we landed on this dirt landing strip, that's their airport, and we took a two-hour drive up to the village of Marfranc and met the sisters of St. Teresa of the Child Jesus. Here we are with Sister Evelyn and another sister, and the nieces of Father Reiser, Joyce and Anne, and that handsome guy in the middle, that's, that's, that's me, all right? <laughs> Sister Evelyn had been sent to Marfranc a few months earlier to take over the care of the elderly and dying, people who had been abandoned. The place she inherited, in her words, is deplorable. The mission had two identical, or has two identical buildings, one for the women and one for the men. There's the women's, and here is the men's. Here is the men's, there it is. And inside are pretty, uh, they're basically the same. They have about 16 beds and not much else. Both buildings are in uh, terrible condition, including leaky roofs and old worn out beds that they have propped up on paint cans. Most of the residents are elderly, but there are two young women, one confined to a wheelchair and the other confined to her bed that the sisters care for. Some of the older women need, or most of them, need wheelchairs. Others are blind. 
This, this woman right here has vision issues and is missing part of her right leg. And she tearfully told us over and over again that without the sisters, she would have nothing. The men in the other building are in similar physical condition, many frail and needing walkers and wheelchairs to move about. The buildings have no electricity, no toilets, no running water. To get to the bathroom, both the men and the women need to leave their building, work their way down the stairs, and then walk or be pulled to the bathroom. There's the bathroom right there. Exactly. You can see for yourself, but not really fully appreciate unless you're standing right there, how gross, degrading, and dangerous the facilities are. Here's the kitchen. That's not the kitchen. Here's the kitchen, yes. There's the kitchen building, and inside that building is the actual kitchen. Of course, no refrigerator, no uh, radar range, no, uh, uh, no electricity, so nothing. Here's the source of water for the whole campus, a well and a hand pump. A person must physically pump all the water needed for cooking, for showers, to flush the toilets, and to wash clothes. The residents have no separate building for meals or activities, although they do gather outside every day to pray the rosary. Building a new sanitary block near this site is the number one priority of the sisters. It would be connected to the residents. Another high priority is a new well with a diesel power generator to run the pump and to provide some electricity. They also need to replace the roofs of the buildings and replace the beds. And a future wish is to build a separate building on this site for meals and activities that is easily accepts, accessible for residents in wheelchairs and walkers. The other part of what the sisters want to do is to build a school and provide an education for the poor children of the village. There is no public school system in Haiti. If you want your child to go to school, you pay for it. It costs about 50 to 75 dollars to send your child to school. Well, Sister Evelyn wants to begin building a school for 100 or so three, four, and five-year-olds, and then add a grade each year moving forward. Building a school, which would be a cement slab with a tin roof and chalkboards, costs about four or five thousand dollars. And then she wants to use the land to grow crops and raise chickens, goats, and cows. My hope with the sisters up there and Jeremy is that we could immediately help the sisters with the financial support needed to replace the roofs, to buy a generator for the well, and to build the school. And through future support, help with the ongoing operational needs of the school. That's Jeremy. To, to replace the roofs, about a thousand bucks to put in new tin and to replace the uh, wood supports. The other place that our parish could support, or I hope we could support, is an orphanage in Port-au-Prince that's run by a group of nuns from Croatia. Here we are with Sister Liberia, Sister Miriam, and Sister Anna, and the two uh, nieces of Father Reiser. The sisters care for about 50 children who have been abandoned in Port-au-Prince or have been brought to the home by their parents. The residence includes several bedrooms, each one of them having four to five bunk beds. So young people, if you complain about having to share your room with a sister or one brother, imagine having to share it with nine of them. Each child has a small cubby hole in which their shoes and belongings are neatly arranged. The sisters offer the, the children great love but they have also high expectations for the children. Each of the children go to school, which the sisters pay for. They have chores to do. Some have started their own gardens. They have time to play with a very loud jump rope that they've constructed with plastic bottles in the middle. And then they attend mass each Sunday, which is located next to their home. The most immediate needs of the sisters are financial help to pay for the children to go to school, shoes for the boys and girls, school supplies, and personal hygiene items. Now, 
In today's bulletin, you're going to read that we're running behind in weekly giving as we near the completion of our fiscal year. And I'm asking everyone to help close the gap in the last three weeks of the fiscal year. And so you may ask to me, Father, what are you smoking? Huh? <laughs> we're behind in what we're supposed to do here, and now you're asking us to help the people of Haiti. A fair question, but one I would turn back on all of us. Is this really an either or? Either we support the parish or we support the people of Haiti? Can't we do both? Certainly we need to support all the beautiful ministries that we use to teach the faith and to respond to the needs in our neck of the woods. But would we want our parents or our grandma or grandpa to live in a home with a leaking roof? Or to get to the bathroom, be required to negotiate stairs in their walker, walk about a block in the dark, and go to a bathroom which is really a stinky hole in the ground? Don't we want every young person to have the opportunity to be a kid, to go to school, to be safe, to be treated with dignity and respect? Yeah, I'm asking you to meet the deficit of the parish and to help with a hurting part of the body of Christ in a nation that is hurting. We can't solve all the problems of the world, but we can solve some of them, which I'm inviting us to do. Instead of taking a second collection today, what I'm asking you to do, if you can, is to throw a little extra in the basket today. A percentage of this week's collection will be put in a separate fund for Haiti. And then I'm going to discuss with the Outreach Committee, the Parish Finance Council, the Parish Leadership Council, and the staff, whether we want to include these two groups in our mission. And this is your money, so I invite you to join in the discussion by talking to members of the committees or sending me a note. If we decide to make one or both of these groups part of our mission as a parish, then I look forward to taking people from this parish to Haiti to meet these people and to form relationships. If we choose not to include these groups, we use the donated money that's restricted to Haiti, in Haiti, but then use other monies that have been collected for outreach efforts elsewhere. And I still look forward to taking groups to Haiti to meet the people and to build relationships. This has opened up a really a whole new avenue for me and a whole new outlook on life, and I want to introduce you to that. And so on this solemnity of Corpus Christi, we share in the suffering, death, and the resurrection of the Lord, and we receive his very body and blood. But our Eucharist is not complete here. Our work is not finished. After singing our closing song, we go out to our Mount of Olives. We go out to our world to fulfill what has begun in this place, to build up the body of Christ, to do all that the Lord has commanded us to love our neighbor as ourselves.